Welcome to this series of classes by Dr. Johnson C. Philip. He is a foremost Christian apologist and Bible expositor with a worldwide demand. Please press the subscribe button below this video and then please click the bell icon near it. This will ensure that you never miss any valuable video of Dr. Philip. God bless you. We, are, we have picked up a very important subject, Bibliology. What does the Bible tell us about itself? Now, before we go further, we all know that there are hundreds upon hundreds of denominations around us. And each denomination has its own peculiarity. Of all these denominations or groups, which is the group in which people are known as or in which group which group is labeled as uh, people of the book? People of the book. That title came to the brethren, whether in India or outside, because the brethren assemblies or the brethren movement, whether it is in India or outside, was the first movement that emphasized the need for each and every believer to open the Bible the need to read it and understand it. I still remember my great-grandfather Sundays when he, he used to go to church, he used to carry the Bible with him. In fact, carrying your personal Bible to the church is a habit made widely popular by the brethren. Before the brethren movement came, people would just go to church. That's all. But the brethren encouraged the practice of carrying your personal Bible to the church. I remember my great-grandfather who used to carry the Bible to the church. That Bible was long and broad like this, but it was four times thicker than this book. And it was so heavy that you could not carry it in your hand. And therefore, it was covered in a cloth and it was carried to church like this. I still remember my childhood when many, many contemporaries of my great-grandfather, they used to go to church, maybe four kilometers, five or even ten kilometers away from their, their homes, and their Bibles were so heavy that this is the way they used to carry. Yet, Sunday after Sunday, month after month, year after year, they faithfully carried their heavy Bibles to the church because the Brethren movement right from the beginning emphasized the need for each believer to have his or her Bible, which they should open and read regularly at home and also when they attend a church meeting. Since this book is in my hand, those who read Malayalam, I want to remind you, this is a book produced by me and Dr. Sanish Chiriyan. CCL means Christian Classic Library. And uh, in Christian Classical Library, it's Malayalam. Um, this is the first volume. This is a Bible survey which covers the books from Genesis up to Esther, historical books of the Bible. In It's a survey, means 
it is not a commentary commentary it introduces those books exactly who wrote those books what is the subject of each book and what are the divisions and if any one of you is interested students of bti can get it at a discount the cost is 1200 rupees but uh, within india we can send it to any we would be happy to send it to any address for 900 rupees and 100 rupee or so much of postage we will pay you can contact me and lord willing uh, the english series of ccl christian classic library is also getting ready and lord willing the first volume will be available in uh, february by february end that is a commentary on the book of jude uh, book of jude is only 25 uh, verses but the commentary would be approximately 200 pages so important is the book just for your information so which group was known as or which group of people was known as the people of the book the brethren why because right from the start of this movement whether in india or outside they gave maximum emphasis to studying and teaching of the scripture and expository teaching of the bible has come mostly from the brethren others adopted it from the brethren the first generation of the brethren not in india but outside india because the uh, brethren movement started in england much before it started in india um many many of them were outstanding bible expositors and the same trend was seen here in india once that movement started we gave much emphasis to studying and teaching of the bible because we very clearly understood bibliology what does the bible say about itself in our last class we were looking at the titles which are used for the bible we looked at a lot of titles and the last one that we saw was bible is compared with water to cleanse Ephesians 5:26 Ephesians 5:26 says that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the blood here water is synonymous to the bible so bible is compared with water because of all the solvents cleansing agents known to mankind for the for the last 6000 years the most common one the most widely used one is water that's a very good comparison with the scripture because or for the scripture that is a good comparison because the scripture cleanses us completely another title used for the scripture is uh, double edged sword hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 brother johnson has started posting these references in the comment box and if any of you miss the references you can see in the comment box where brother johnson has been posting the references he is posting only references and not the full bible verse at my request uh because once you see the reference it is our responsibility to open our own copy of the bible and check whether the speaker is quoting the bible accurately that's a brethren practice and i want all of you to practice that even if you are sitting in front of zoom hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 everyone should memorize it and they should also encourage their children to memorize this verse it says for the word of god is alive and powerful sharper than any two edged sword 
piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit we indians we have been using swords for thousands of years but the indian sword is one sided it cuts only on one edge the other edge is blunt and thick whereas the romans used a kind of sword which had both the edges very sharp what is more the tip of the sword was pointed and that was also sharp so except for the handle the roman sword had sharp edges everywhere and it was able to inflict a cut in whatever direction it moved the scripture compares itself with the double edged sword because ultimately the scripture cuts human thoughts into pieces the biggest intellectuals the biggest ones those who claim that they are big intellectuals none of them could stand in front of the word of god we know of a number of atheists who raised their voices against the bible who said that the bible will be extinct within 19th century the 19th century is gone the 21st century is gone and today we are in the 21st century bible is not extinct rather today the bible is available in far more languages than it was available in the 19th century far more translations far more editions large ones medium ones small ones pocket editions and also even electronic editions when i speak about the bible and its electronic edition i want to pass a remark here uh, a story is circulating in whatsapp that within one generation the printed bible will become extinct because bible is moving to mobile phones and that story is being circulated by one idiot after another in the name of uh, secretary of the bible society the secretary of the bible society has never released any letter like that this kind of stupid news and letters are usually created by anti christian forces and sent to christians and there are a hundred imbeciles among us who simply see this they never check whether it is a reliable thing and keep on circulating please remember just because bible has come to mobile phones it's not going to be extinct rather it is going to be used by more people on more occasions uh, let me give you an example i mentioned uh, the commentary on jude when i started writing that commentary it is the mobile which helped me most because i had loaded a greek new testament onto my my mobile and by while i would sit and write anywhere everywhere i would consult that greek bible and greek dictionary and greek concordance what is the correct word is lexicon the greek lexicon on my mobile i would never have been able to write the initial portions of the commentary on jude without help from the mobile so just because somebody sends a false news that bible will be extinct within a generation because it is now coming in electronic form please remember before you circulate a news please think about it whether it makes sense or not i also have heard people saying that uh, i don't carry bible in my mobile because 
I keep my mobile here and there in unholy places. Now the question is, should you stop carrying the Bible? Should you stop loading the Bible in your mobiles because you put your mobiles in unholy places? Or if uh, you are such a holy man, if you are so much zealous about the holiness of the Bible, should you not carry it in your mobile but stop putting your mobile in unholy places? We have so many stupid arguments against the Bible on electronic devices or against electronic Bibles. My dear brothers and sisters, I thank God for electronic Bibles because of which more and more of our young people are able to carry the Bible with them wherever they are and many of them are able to read it. A lot of young people ask me, now this is, don't consider it as a diversion, it is part of our devotion to bibliology. Lot of people ask me, Uncle, I am a very busy professional. I get very little time to read the Bible. I always tell them, son, daughter, load the Bible onto your mobile whenever wherever you get five minutes, open that electronic Bible and read it. Many, many, many of these young people have come back to me later saying, Uncle, I never realized that that was such a powerful technique because I get a lot of five minute intervals in between. I open my Bible. I open my mobile, I read the Bible, and now I am able to read the whole Bible repeatedly in one year. So, as we are on bibliology, let me, uh, I needed to tell this because all of these, all of this kind of news is produced by people who are opposed to the Bible and they simply insert it here and there in various groups, and there are a lot of undiscerning Christians who simply suck up every idiotic thing that is in the media and circulate it. Please don't do that. Let the Bible come in as many formats as possible because that will only increase the availability of the Bible. We come back to our, uh, our study. We know about the testaments. Bible is made up of uh, two testaments. Actually, the English word testament these days doesn't make any sense uh, because we no longer use the uh, word testament in that sense. Sometimes we talk about will and testament. In the Bible, the words Old Testament and New Testament, the word testament stands for covenant. A covenant is a promise. There is a vast difference between an agreement and a covenant. And an agreement can usually be revoked if conditions are not satisfied. But covenants are usually unrevocable. If a covenant is revocable, then it is no longer a covenant. It is basically an agreement. The Old Testament is known as Old Covenant because it deals with the history and calling of the Jewish nation. It deals with the instituting of the law, these were given by God to his selected people, chosen nation, unconditionally. The nation had not done anything to deserve it. Rather, God chose them, God gave everything. They were faithless. They went away from their commitment repeatedly. In fact, the more we study Old Testament, the more it will sober us to realize that the history of God's people 
is a sad history where falling away from the faith is more common than remaining in faith and the more we read old testament the more it will it will sober us new testament people with the realization that unless we stand strong in our commitment to god we will fall away the new testament is called new testament or the new covenant because it deals with the history and application of the redemption given to us through christ jesus the new covenant deals with abolishing the law the old testament law the old testament law was a system of work and merit whereas after the coming of lord jesus and after the start starting of the church age we live in an era of grace and faith grace alone faith alone that's why old testament and new testaments are uh, termed as old covenant and uh, new covenant one of the first things that we should understand about the bible is the word inspiration whenever we talk about the bible a lot of us talk about uh, bible is the is god's inspired word what exactly is the sense in which the word inspiration is used i ask this because we use the word inspiration in uh, many ways and in many senses for example a person may say oh when i saw the carpenter i was inspired to go back and complete the hobby project which i had started in my home that's an inspiration i am a writer and i am inspired to write by a number of trigger factors when i hear about somebody uh, who through his or her pain wrote a book i am inspired when someone asks me a question and when he says uncle i love that answer i wish that there was a book or booklet on that subject i am inspired to write a detailed answer in the form of a book and now these days in the form of an electronic book that is not the sense in which the word inspiration you is used for the bible when we use the word inspiration for bible what we mean is that god spoke through the bible writers in such a way that when they wrote the bible it was without any omission any error or any exaggeration please remember these three things there is no omission all information which born again people need for their life and their testimony and their faith is given in the bible without omission we don't have to look outside the bible for anything related to our life and testimony so when we speak that bible is the inspired word of god what we mean is that god has spoken through the 40 writers and the 66 bible 66 books of the bible without omitting any information that is essential or vital for a christian we also mean that there is no error absolutely no error of science history statistics or take any field of learning there is absolutely no error there is also no exaggeration if the bible says that methusela lived for more than 900 years 
it meant that in methuselah's generation he did live for that many years today it is difficult for us to understand but when the bible makes a statement like that there is no exaggeration we will look at some of these things without omission without error without exaggeration we will look in details but please remember the correct concept of bible is that the 66 books have been written without omitting anything that a believer needs without any kind of error and without any kind of exaggeration please remember this these three words are very powerful very very powerful and they can be used very easily to spot people who teach error let me give you the latest example so that you can also use it recently there was much discussion about two videos it was on facebook facebook has countless christian groups in one of the groups the uh, groups there was much discussion about uh, two videos that a man had posted and all the admins were discussing with each other and uh, there was much discussion is the video right e is he teaching what is truth this that this 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 but the admins were not able to come to a conclusion i saw one of the videos and they asked him a straight forward one sentence question i said brother do you believe that bible is in errant and in fallible just one sentence no beating around the bush is the bible in errant and in fallible it was a question mostly about new testament is the new testament in errant and i said please give a straight yes or no answer no beating around the bush and immediately said i do not accept the new testament as inerrant see what powerful statements these are bible is without omission bible is free of error bible is free of exaggeration if a person is speaking a lot of things and if you suspect that he does not accept the bible as god's word straight away ask him whether he believes that the bible is in errant and ask him or her to give a direct yes or no answer some people are very cunning they will try to escape but you can trap them ask them keep on insisting to give an answer but let me assure you without omission without error without exaggeration these three statements are so powerful that you can use these statements to pin down any person's attitude towards the bible there are two key verses about inspiration we have repeatedly seen them the first is uh, second timothy 316 and 17 second timothy 316 and 17 we have repeatedly seen these two verses all scripture is given by the inspiration of god and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness that the man of god may be perfect that means mature thoroughly furnished unto all good works so all scripture is inspired all scripture is given by the inspiration of god these two verses second timothy 316 and 17 i urge all the parents here first you please memorize it second please make your children memorize these verses they are very very important and if you 
instill these verses if you etch these verses into their heart when they are very young they will stay with them for long the second key phrase key verse is second peter 1 20 and 21 we have repeatedly read it second peter 1 20 and 21 it's these two verses say knowing this first that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation for the prophecy here prophecy refers to the entire scripture and please remember the scripture uses the word prophecy in many senses and that i made clear in one of the classes so here the word prophecy refers to all the 66 books of the bible and it says for the prophecy we can paraphrase it as for the scripture came not did not come in old time by the will of man but holy men of god spoke as they were moved by the holy spirit scripture is not man's word scripture is god's word and let me once again remind you many many of us are guilty of reducing the scripture to the level of man's word when we stand up and preach and say paul says like this peter says like this and james says like this our children get the message and the message is that this is man's word please this habit needs to be reformed since we understand that this is god's word therefore when we speak of the scripture let us always say the scripture says this or the holy spirit says this ideas have consequences my dear brothers and sisters ideas have consequences when we keep on repeating the statement that paul says this and uh, um peter says this and james says this the idea that listeners get is that this is man's word and a lot of christians today very clearly label portions of the bible as entirely human i mentioned many examples pre earlier so i'll not repeat but this thing i want to urge everyone because a number of people who are attending the class today brothers as well as sisters they do have a teaching ministry in your teaching ministry please do not reduce the bible to man's word the, please use the expression the scripture says or the holy spirit says and please remember in 1800s the theological radicals had challenged that a time will come when under their influence we the bible believing people will label statements of the bible as human statements and not as statements of the holy spirit and not as statements of the scripture and they have been very successful so it is a time to reform the way we speak about the scripture it is in, the scripture is inspired by god so let us refer to whatever the bible says as the scripture or the holy spirit says another verse that i want to bring to your attention is first corinthians 12 7 corinthians 12 7 it's a very important verse and the verse says first corinthians 127 says but the manifestation of the spirit is given to every person to profit everyone uh, you may find that some of my quotations are different from king james bible uh, please remember that uh, 
as a quote from the Bible, uh, I'm translating some of the words directly from the Greek. Now, what's the importance of this verse? It's a very, very, very important verse, but often uh, we ignore this portion of the scripture. But let us start with this question. The writers of the 60, the 40 writers of the 66 books of the Bible were inspired by the Holy Spirit. Is such an inspiration available outside the Bible? Or is such an inspiration available today to teachers of the Bible, preachers of the Bible, or Christian preachers? And the answer is no. Holy Spirit inspiration, which we find in 66 books, is or was available only to those writers. It is not available to us. There are a number of charismatic speakers worldwide who claim that even today the Holy Spirit speaks through them. And when we ask the question, do you mean that what you speak are canonical? We will come to the word canon later. Just let us assume that it is talk, talking about the Bible. When we ask them, do you mean that what you speak is canonical? They say, yes, the Holy Spirit is uh, giving his inspired word through us. Please remember that is blasphemy. The scripture directly and indirectly reminds that only the 66 books were inspired by the Holy Spirit. Today, nobody is inspired in that way. There is no verbal inspiration. Then the question is, hey, Brother Johnson, uh, what about you? You are teaching from the scripture. Don't you have Holy Spirit inspiration? No, my brothers and sisters, no verbal inspiration is available to me or through me. Neither through me nor through you and nor through any of these speakers who claim to be Holy Spirit inspired. Then the question is, what exactly is then available? Another question related to that is, are the Bible translations verbally inspired by the Holy Spirit? The answer is no. Bible translations are not verbally inspired by the Holy Spirit. Then how can we believe that the translation is accurate? That's a very fair and reasonable question. The answer is found in this verse, 1 Corinthians 12, 7. But as I always say, we never build a doctrine on the basis of a single verse. I may quote a single verse, but I'm not building that point on the basis of a single verse but rather that single verse serves us as the key verse on that concept, but there are many auxiliary verses that throw further light on this, on this key verse. The key verse says, the manifestation of the Spirit, a correct modern translation would be, the illumination of the spirit the light of the spirit is given to every person to profit everyone so what i get when i study the scripture when i present the scriptures to you 
what i get from the holy spirit is not verbal inspiration what i get is the illumination of the holy spirit and therefore every believer who is listening who is attending this bible class should very clearly distinguish between inspiration verbal inspiration of the holy spirit and the illumination that is given to every believer what every man gets is not verbal inspiration verbal inspiration was given only to 40 people what every person gets is illumination well you may ask does every man means every man in this world no not at all we should interpret the scripture in context here the scripture is speaking about believers the illumination of the spirit is given to every believer what's the difference between verbal inspiration and illumination verbal inspiration means each and every word that was written by these 40 authors in the 66 books of the bible came there because the holy spirit wanted that word to be there does not mean that every word there was spoken by god the scripture contains statements of believers statements of unbelievers statements of satan statements of angels statement of the serpent statement of a donkey lots of statements verbal inspiration doesn't mean that all these statements were made by god rather verbal inspiration means all these statements were recorded there in the bible because the holy spirit wanted them to be recorded that is why lord jesus said the sky and the earth may fall away but even a jot and tittle in modern english we can say not even an iota of the scripture will fail that is verbal inspiration but what i and you get is illumination the manifestation of the spirit or the illumination of the spirit is given to every believer to profit everyone well you may say brother johnson uh, when i read the bible i don't find anything like illumination it's possible yes yes it's possible that the illumination is there but uh, you're not able to see it i'm sure all of you have been to rooms which are dark from a highly illuminated place when you enter that room everything looks dark but what happens after five minutes after you become used to that darkness we find that in most of the cases what was dark earlier is no longer dark it is illuminated it takes a little bit of becoming used to the scripture the holy spirit does not automatically illuminate every dick tom harry who wants illumination the holy spirit wants every believer to wait upon god so that we are tuned to the holy spirit and then the holy spirit might illuminate us because before we are tuned our condition is like that person who has entered a dark room he cannot see anything so even if the holy spirit makes everything clear to us we don't understand it 
so illumination does not come automatically one has to wait upon the holy spirit to be illuminated and this requires daily discipline or daily practice let me give you an example i am sure many of you remember bible verses which you read a hundred times but you never noticed either the significance of that verse or the meaning of that verse and then suddenly one day as you read the same passage you suddenly say hey now i understand the meaning of this passage that is the illumination of the holy spirit maybe the holy spirit wanted you to read all the background before he illuminates you properly on that passage so brothers and sisters illumination is available to all of us but we have to be tuned to the holy spirit we should be willing to discipline ourselves to read the scripture so the vast difference between the 66 books of the bible and between what i teach what you teach what i understand you what you understand is those 66 books are verbally inspired by the holy spirit whereas when we read the scripture what we get from the scripture is illumination of the holy spirit and the scripture is very clear that illumination is available to each and every believer if you are not getting it that means we are not waiting upon the holy spirit may the lord help each one of us to understand these things i invite brother ben thomas for closing prayer dear friends i am confident that you enjoyed listening to this question answer video by dr johnson c philip he would love to get your questions please post your questions in the comment box below this video and he will prepare a video reply for you please post only one question at a time and make it as detailed as possible so that dr philip has no problem in understanding exactly what you mean Also please encourage this ministry by subscribing to this channel below this video there is a subscribe button please click it also please click the bell icon near it to complete the process of subscribing thank you very much for being such an encouragement to our channel